I will now introduce the concept of random variables. So, the whole idea is um, Okay, let me uh, begin by uh, giving some examples first. So, suppose two dice are thrown up okay, and they are fair dice. So, you can say that maybe two fair dice are thrown up. Now, um, let uh, x denote the sum of the two numbers that show up. Okay. That means, uh, the two numbers whatever 3, 4, 1, 2, whatever the two numbers show up when I throw the two dice, I add up the sum, I add up the two numbers and I denote that sum by x. Right. Now, you can see that the number, the values of x will vary from 2 to 12. Right. Now, since the outcome of tossing up the two dice is not certain, so that is a random phenomena, because any face can show up. So, any number can show up. Therefore, you see that the uh, uh, value of x is dependent on the tossing of the coin and whatever the outcome. So, therefore, this is what we mean by a random variable. So, this is actually now you can see that um, okay, before I start calling it a random variable, I should uh, explain more. See, see uh, when x is equal to 2, then it corresponds to the point 1 comma 1 of the sample space. I had uh, earlier in my lecture shown you, uh, when we were talking about, uh, when I introduced the concept of sample spaces, then I had shown you that uh, say omega uh, the sample space will contain 36 pairs of such points i j, where i varies from 1 to 6 and j varies from 1 to 6. So, um, uh, when x is equal to 2, this actually corresponds to the outcome 1 comma 1 of the sample space. Uh, both the faces must show 1 each and therefore, the sum will be 2. Similarly, if x is 3, then um, it can be either 1 comma 2 or 2 comma 1. So, both of them add up to 3 and so on. So, essentially trying to say, so one can now give a formal definition of a random variable that is, so x is a real valued function that maps the sample space omega into the real line. And we call, so this x uh, what we have described, so through examples, this x is called a random variable right, and subsets, because these are all subsets. This is a singleton, this is a subset containing two points of omega and so, this is again the number when x is 12, it will again correspond to the singleton 6 comma 6. Right. Okay. So, um, such a function which is a real valued function <coughs> and when it maps the subsets of the sample space corresponding to an experiment to real numbers, we will say that it is a random variable. Now, if you again take another example, uh, consider the experiment of tossing a coin till two consecutive heads appear. Okay. So, I toss a coin and unless I get two heads consecutively, I will not stop. Now, um, the sample space can be, if, if it happens in two tosses, then I will get the uh, outcome will be h h right? and I will stop here but if it does not show a head in the first trial, then it may show in the second and third. So, that means, this will happen in three trial, uh, three tossing of the coins and so on. So, this will continue and this may not have a, a, a finite process, this may not be a finite process, because you may continue throwing up to tails. Okay. So, now x is the number of tosses required for two consecutive heads to appear. So, you see here, for example, in this case x will be equal to 2 then it corresponds to the outcome h h. If x is 3, then it corresponds to the outcome t h h. Right? First draw, first toss gives you tail and then the other next two tosses give you heads. Then x equal to 4 will correspond to this and so you can go on writing uh, diff for different values of x, what will be the corresponding subsets of the sample space omega. Right? So, again I will uh, uh, reiterate the same thing that since the values of a random variable are determined by the outcome of an experiment, we can assign probabilities to the values it takes, because there, there are probabilities associated with the outcomes of the sample space. And since random, uh, random variable is mapping uh, subsets or these events from the sample space to real numbers, I can assign probabilities. Right. So, um, for example, in the throwing up of uh, two, two fair dice, uh, see when probability x is equal to 2 would be then in that case, probability of the singleton 1 comma 1, which is 1 by 36. 
because e every pair each of the 36 pairs is equally likely, since the two dice are fair. Then when uh, probability of x equal to 3 would be uh, corresponding to the uh, probability of the subset containing the pairs 1 comma 2 and 2 comma 1. So, this will be 2 by 36. So, just for your benefit in fact, you can complete you could have completed the table by yourself. So, uh, this I have shown you for all different values of uh, the, that x can take from 2 to 12, what are the corres corresponding subsets and then the pro associated probabilities. And since um, one of the x must take one of the numbers, right? since x must take one of the numbers from 2 to 12 since you are throwing up two dice. So, two numbers will show up and their sum will be one of the numbers from 2 to 12. So, then these are the all possible uh, uh, events that can take place. And so, uh, probability x equal to i uh, from to i varying from 2 to 12 should be 1. So, this is a probability mass function as we are uh, uh, I am going to formally define uh, the concept of probability mass function now. So, the random variables can be of different types. Let me first consider the case when x is a uh, x is a discrete random variable. So, as the name suggests it means that it takes countable number of possible values and um, uh, let us say that the random variable takes the values a i i varying from 1 to infinity. Now, of course, when I say countable, countably infinite or countably finite it can be either case, but uh, the values are uh, sort of uh, you can enumerate the values that it will take. Okay. Uh, now, um, so therefore, we will say that probability x equal to a i is positive, because these are the values that it, it takes and therefore, there will be a positive probability associated with, the, uh, with each of the num these numbers. So, uh, this will be positive and for all other values of x, it will be 0. That means, when x is not equal to a 1, a 2 uh, up to in uh, this thing, uh, whatever the number of uh, number of a i's, then uh, the probability at points which are not equal to any of these values is 0. Right. Now, from axiom 3, since uh, x must take one of the values a i. Therefore, when you add up the probabilities from 1 to infinity, all these probabilities must add up to 1 by your axiom 3. Okay. Now, uh, this function which assigns probabilities to different values of a random variable that is called and in the case when it is a discrete random variable, we call it the probability mass function. And as we have already seen the any probability function must satisfy the three axioms. So, here um, in short we also write p m p m f for probability mass function all the time you cannot go on writing uh, these three letters. So, normally I will be uh, referring to it as p m f. Now, it helps to plot p x on the x y plane. So, consider the uh, probability mass function p 1 is 2 by 3, p 2 is 1 by 6 and p 3 is 1 by 6. So, the random variable here is taking the values 1, 2, 3 and these are the probabilities associated with it. So, you can draw a bar chart. So, the idea is that you uh, you know uh, erect uh, uh, rectangles. So, the height here is uh, the, uh, the, this height is 2 by 3 and this height will be 1 by 6. So, that means, uh, the uh, rectangle the bar is uh, centered at the value 1 and the height is 2 by 3. So, this is the idea. Similarly, here this, this height of the bar is 1 by 6 and same as 3. Right. Now, you I have already also given you one other random variable, which was uh, giving you the sum of the numbers that show up when you throw two fair die. Uh, for, uh, so, uh, you can try to draw the bar chart for the uh, that random variable, right? That will be a big one because the values it takes are from two to twelve. Okay. Now, um, so having defined a random variable for the discrete case, uh, let me now uh, associate uh, some other uh, functions with it. So, cumulative distribution function. So, probability mass function we have already defined. Now, this is the cumulative distribution function, which again I will be referring to as C d f in the short form. So, for every real, real number x, the C d f of a random variable x is given by this equation. So, capital F x of x is, uh, is, is the notation for the cumulative density function. And this is actually the probability of x less than or equal to the real number x. And so, here uh, the, the right hand side is actually the uh, probability that uh, your random variable x takes all values 
less than or equal to small x. Okay, this is the idea. It immediately follows that uh, if you if you want to compute the probability x greater than a and less than or equal to b, then this is this can be written as probability x less than or equal to b minus probability x less than or equal to a. See that is why this is x greater than a, because you are subtracting uh, for all sample points for which uh, this uh, capital X is less than or equal to a. So, the probability of that. So, therefore, this becomes x greater than a right and this uh, in terms of our cumulative distribution function, we write f x b minus f x a right. Now, all along uh, the, uh, the notation for this, this probability is cumulative distribution function and if some place by mistake I call it as co, uh, cumulative density function, then uh, that has to be ignored. Uh, the uh, proper terminology is cumulative distribution function. If you want to find out the probability of x lying in an interval, then you can define this in terms of. So, I should have actually said this is as f x b minus f x a. So, you can immediately see, because here this is this actually is equal to the event that x is less than b and x is greater than a. So, x greater than a implies uh, it is the opposite of uh, x less than a. So, therefore, minus x less than or equal to a, because then this gives you the values of uh, yeah. Okay, uh, if you feel that you still need uh, some explanation, you can do it for yourself to say that uh, See, from basically what you are saying is that from x less than or equal to b, you want to subtract the, because a is less than b. So, you want to subtract all values of x less than or equal to a, then you will get the uh, this thing that x lies between a and b. Right? Okay. Now, if x takes the value uh, x naught, saying because after all x is a discrete random variable, then uh, the notation would be that f x x naught and then f x x naught minus. So, the, this, this actually says that you are approaching the value x naught from the left. So, from values which are less than x naught. So, where f x x naught minus is the limiting, limiting value of f x y, where y goes to x naught minus. And this notation means that if your uh, number here is x naught, then you are approaching uh, the uh, number x naught from the left of x naught minus this. So, and this will be clear in a minute, because um, yeah. So, now uh, let me just uh, spell out the uh, values here. So, essentially what I am saying here is that if x 1, x 2, x n are the let us say the finite uh, n values that the random variable x takes, then uh, and x 1 is less than x 2 is less than x n. See, then what is happening is that the distribution function f x is a step function, because you see you say probability x less than x 1, then this is 0 in this case, right? because it is not taking any values less than x 1 and x 1 is the smallest value here. So, this probability is 0, but then if you want to say probability x less than or equal to uh, less than or equal to x 1, if you now do this, then what happens this is equal to probability x equal to x 1 because it is not going to take any other value, uh, any value less than x 1. The only value in this region that x will take is equal to x 1. So, this is actually equal to. So, in this case, because it is the first value, this is equal to x 1. right? And so, um, this is what happens. Now, uh, so that means, up to, uh, up to uh, values less than, just less than x 1, your uh, when if you want to draw the graph which I am showing you here. Okay, I have drawn the graph fine. So, let me uh, show you the graph for this first. You see what is happening is that here the random variable is taking the value 1. So, before that the value will be 0. So, therefore, if I want to draw the C D F uh, the cumulative density function for the for that random variable, then you see it is 0 and it is 0 till at the point 1, it takes a jump, because at point 1, when x 1 is 1, this will be equal to probability of x equal to 1, which is 2 by 3. So, therefore, the function from 0 will take the jump, and so it will be uh, this thing. And then you see, for probability x less than or equal to uh, less than x 2, if I do this, then here it is again continues to take 
this only, because less than x 2 or in, okay, if you want me to write 1 here in this case and this is 2, then as long as x is strictly less than 2, the number uh, the uh, there is no other uh, probability, because x is only continues to take the value 1 and here also it takes the value 1. So, as long as x is strictly less than 2, that means as long as I, I am here somewhere here and not uh, taking the value 2, my value of the cumulative density function remains constant. So, this is like a step function, uh, it continues to be the same value as probability x equal to 1 and then the moment I say probability x less than or equal to 2, then this will be probability x equal to 1 plus probability x equal to 2 because now for x less than or equal to 2, there are two possibilities x can be equal to 1 and x can be equal to 2. So, then the two probabilities will get added up. So, that means, it will be 2 by 3, 2 by 3 plus 1 by 6, which will be 4 by 6. So, it will be 5 by 6 and you see. So, from uh, 2 by 3, it takes a jump and at 2, the value now becomes 5 by 6. right? And so, the jump and you can see that this jump that it takes is equal to the probability of the uh, discrete random variable at that point. That means, probability x equal to 2. So, still uh, till up to this point, this was probability x equal to 1. The moment I said probability x less than or equal to 2, it became probability x equal to 1 plus probability x equal to 2. So, the value of the cumulative distribution function jumped by the probability of x equal to 2. And finally, when you talk about probability x less than 3 again, it will continue to be this, because there will be no other value of x here. And then, the moment you make it less than or equal to, it will take a jump, the figure is not very accurate, it will be this. right? And so, here again, the moment I say equal, less than or equal to, the probability of x equal to 3 will get added to it. And so, uh, again the jump will be by the probability. So, that means, this will be a discrete function and a jump function or a step function, whatever you can call. And the point of discontinuities or the point of jumps that it takes will correspond to the values of the random variable and the amount of jump that the function takes will be equal to the probability of the uh, equal to the probability of the, uh, that of the random variable taking that particular value, where you are considering the jump. To continue with the general case, when x takes the values x i, i varying from 1 to n and x 1 is less than x 2 less than x n, then uh, value of f remains constant in the interval x i minus 1 comma x i, right? because it takes the value x i minus 1 and after that it does not take any other value random variable. So, the, the, uh, the cumulative density function will remain the same and you see this is the sign, this says it is closed at this end and this is open. That means, in this interval the values begin from x i minus 1 to all values which are less than x i. So, therefore, um, for all these values, uh, your cumulative density function remains constant, right? which I will interpret as saying that, because it is uh, constant in this interval, therefore, it is right continuous. right? Because I am approaching from here, if I approach from the right hand side, uh, that means, larger values than x i minus 1, then as I approach x i minus 1, this value of the function remains the same. So, it is a constant. So, it is continuous and it attains the value. Uh, at x i minus 1. right? So, um, um, the same value and therefore, the function is right continuous and uh, what we just saw is that it takes a step or a jump uh, equal to the size of the probability x i. So, that means, at x i it takes a jump which is which is equal to the uh, probability of the uh, random variable at that point x i. right? And also we have seen that it is an increasing function and since um, this will be uh, when you want to compute this. See, this is equal to probability x less than or equal to x n, and by this means it has taken all the values, right? For x less than or equal to x n means it has taken all the values x one, x two, x n. So all the probabilities have been added up. Actually, so this is nothing but summation x i i varying from one to n, and therefore it must add up to one. 
So, this is what uh, and now let me formalize the property properties of the uh, cumulative uh, distribution function. <coughs> so, as we have seen that the function has to be an increasing function. So, that means, what do we mean by fun when we say a function is increasing? That is, if a is less than b, then the value of the function at a must be less than or equal to the value of the function at b. And this can be easily explained. I have already done it through examples, but you see that the event x less than or equal to a is a subset of the event x less than or equal to b, because b is bigger than a. So, all the values that are uh, that give you this event also um, all the points of the sample space which give you this event also are here. And therefore, as we have seen uh, from our proposition using the axioms of probability that the probability of this event must be less than or equal to the probability of this event and that is what this represents. This represents the probability of this event and this represents the probability of this event. Therefore, this inequality follows and so the function is a increasing function is a non decreasing function. Then <coughs> limit f x as x goes to infinity is 1. So, um, we take an increasing sequence let us say of values x n to x increasing that means, uh, values keep on increasing. So, we approach that means, if you have an x here then you are approaching x from here. So, all these values are increasing and you are uh, reaching up to um, x. So, then again uh, because of this property uh, the event x less than or equal to x n is a subset of the event x less than or equal to x n plus 1, because x n plus 1 is bigger than x n right. And therefore, limit probability x less than x n as n goes to infinity actually um, because this goes to infinity. So, therefore, the this events they merge into x less than infinity. So, all possible values of x get covered up just as. Um, so, therefore, uh, this becomes equal to probability x less than infinity and therefore, this must be 1, because all values of x get covered up in this event right. And so, this must be equal to 1. Then uh, we say that the, the limit f x as x goes to minus infinity is 0. So, the argument here is same except that here we took an increasing sequence to x n, there we will take a uh, decreasing sequence. So, this is as x goes to uh, uh, x goes to minus infinity. So, limit f x is 0. So, we can argue because here I am saying that as x goes to infinity f x is 1. So, when you take the decreasing sequence your, your events will be that means, if I take decreasing sequence um, x 1 x n, where this is greater than this, then this is greater than x 2, this is greater than x n right. So, then um, the event would be uh, when when um, n goes to infinity, uh, when n goes to infinity, right? Because I'm taking decreasing sequences, so then uh, it'll become empty set. So this will be probability. See, you will be considering the event x less than x i, right? And this is bigger than probability x uh, less than or equal to x i plus one. So, this is the whole idea. So, just reverse the argument and so therefore, as you go on there will be uh, nothing common as n goes to infinity this will be uh, nothing common to uh, right, because I am saying x goes to minus infinity and so here um, there will be nothing uh, common and so this will finally, converge to this will become uh, probability x what shall I say here. Yeah, the symbol you have to use is that you have to say that x is empty. That means, this becomes probability of the empty set that is what will happen. So, so therefore, um, uh, the limiting value of f x as x goes to minus infinity must be 0, because there will be no values of x that are possible once x goes to minus infinity right. So, same as 2. Then f is right continuous, because uh, any b and any decreasing sequence b n you take a b and any decreasing sequence to b n. So, same thing I am saying you approach b from right, you are approaching this. So, the sequence b n is coming like this from right hand side and uh, a limit f b n as n goes to infinity is f b, because same thing here x less than or equal to b n are decreasing events 
the sequence b n converges to b, right. So, the events converge to x less than or equal to b. And so, um, so what we are trying to say is that x less than or equal to b n, this event will contain the event x less than or equal to b n plus 1 and this, uh, finally, will also all of them will contain the event x um, less than or equal to b, right. And so, therefore, uh, probability uh, of x less than or equal to b n will be greater than or equal to the probability of uh, x taking the values less than or equal to b n plus 1 and so on and finally, this. So, now by the continuity property of the probability function p, we get that limit f b n will be equal to f b, because this is the value uh, well, you know you are taking the limit here as n goes to infinity. So, therefore, um, because p is a continuous function or uh, probability function uh, which is continuous, therefore, this will be equal to f b. Right. And so, this proves the right continuity of f. And so, now we have shown all the four properties 1, 2, 3, 4 of the um, cumulative distribution function. And so, uh, any cumulative distribu distribution function must satisfy all these four criteria. Okay. And in fact, uh, these four conditions are necessary and sufficient for any function to be a cumulative distribution function corresponding to a random variable x. So, this is important. And so, whenever you want to characterize a function, which is a, which you say is a, a cumulative distribution function for a random variable x, then you have to make sure that these four conditions are satisfied by that function, before you can uh, take it to be a, the cumulative distribution function. Okay. Now, uh, so if you uh, take, take the example that we have been referring back to all the time, this is when two dice are rolled up and uh, x denotes the, uh, the random variable x denotes the sum of the two numbers that show up, then uh, the expect, okay. so this is fine. Okay. So, that is it. Now, I started giving you the example, but first let me now define a very important um, a commodity or a quantity, which we associate with a random variable, expected value of a random variable x here. So, if x is a discrete random variable having the probability mass function p x, the expectation or expected value e x is defined by e x is equal to sigma x into p x such that. So, that means, you multiply x by the by, by its corresponding probability and then you add up. So, when you add up all these product products, so which is over all x such that p x is positive because if p x is 0, then the contribution here will be 0. So, we take this sum over all possible x's for which p x is positive. So, if you add up this these values, then we define this as the expected value of the random variable x. Now, so therefore, we consider this example now, consider the example in which two fair dice were rolled up and x denoted the sum of the two numbers that show up. Right? So, in that case, I had given you the table uh, of you know uh, for different values of x, what will be the probabilities. So, if you just uh, refer to that table, then you can see that this uh, this will be the thing and this will add up to 255 upon 36, will be so, which will be some number close to 7, a little bigger than 7. Okay. So, this is the expected value of the random variable. That means, uh, in other words, what you are saying is that um, if you if you sort of keep throwing the uh, two dice and add the numbers and then that means you take the average so that means suppose you throw up the number 100 times uh, throw up the two dice 100 times and then add up the uh, numbers that show up and then divide that by 100 that will be close to your expected value right okay now here uh, if you look at this expression what does it say now since um, since uh, since p x for all x such that p x is positive is 1, this you can say that expected x is the weighted average, weighted average of the values that x takes with weights as the corresponding probabilities. Right. 
So, there can be some more interesting interpretations of uh, the expected value, which I will show you right now. So, E x can also be interpreted as a center of gravity of the masses p x i, i varying from 1 to n, located at points x i, i varying from 1 to n. Right. That means, you have you can imagine that the p x i's are the masses, which you place at the points corresponding points x i's, and then uh, you take the, uh, compu the center of gravity of this distribution of masses is also uh, the same as the expectation x. Now, um, see that means, you imagine a ro weightless rod, uh, in which weights of masses p x i are located at corresponding points at corresponding points x i, i varying from 1 to n. So, that means, imagine that this is the rod, weightless rod and you have placed these points, uh, the masses p, p x 1 at x 1, p x 2 at x 2 and so on. So, I have taken the uh, points to be x 1, x 2, x n, you know, uh, this is one distribution, but it could be anywhere distributed, but whatever uh, the diagram will be the same that p x 1 is uh, the mass located at x 1, p x 2 is the mass located at x 2 and so on. Now, the point at which the rod will balance itself is known as its center of gravity. So, from <coughs> this thing you can, uh, this is the notation and so, um, uh, this is exactly what is given by the expression E x. So, E x can be the uh, the notation, it can be also be referred to as the center of gravity of these different masses, which are the probabilities located at the corresponding points x i's. Now, <coughs> note that here I have just taken, uh, when I defined E x, I took x, to, uh, uh, I said that x takes finite number of values and hence uh, this quantity is a finite uh, quantity and therefore, it is de defined, therefore, it exists. So, wherever there are different cases, I will discuss them as and when we arrive. Now, uh, we also refer to E x as the first moment of x, right. So, for when x is a discrete random variable and it is taking finite number of values. So, then I can also define expectation x square, which will be sigma x i square p x i for all i varying from 1 to n. Obviously, the summation is over all those i's for which p x i is positive. Now, um, and uh, even if um, the random variable x is taking uh, uh, countably uh, infinite num uh, values, then also if then I can you know take any function of x and I can accordingly uh, write down the um, expectation of the of that function of a random variable. We will formally define expectation of uh, of uh, you know of g of x, when g of x is some function of a random variable x. So, that we will take care later on and of course, for a continuous random variable also we will define in a formal way, but right now I can just say that because it is a summation sign. So, uh, and if as long as this summation is a finite number, I can define these expectations and so here for example, this will be the second moment right and also the linearity of expected function because it is a uh, uh, summation. So, therefore, uh, it is a linear function, right. That means, if I take uh, c x plus d y to random variable x and y, then also I will be able to write the expectation of c x plus d y will be c times expectation of x plus uh, d times expectation of y. So, because of this summation thing, uh, of, of course, if x and y have the same um, uh, have the same probability mass function, then so what I am saying is that right now, uh, wherever if I am using the linearity of uh, the expectation, then I am doing it in the scenario when your x uh, takes uh, maybe I finite values or countably infinite values and wherever the summation is a finite number, I can uh, treat E as a linear function and also <coughs> uh, I can define the expectation as a of uh, any uh, function of a random variable in this way. Now, um, yeah, okay, here I would like to give, uh, talk of an example also. So, um, let us see, um, then the, uh, the second moment can also be defined here, uh, which is uh, the second moment, if this is the first moment, then the second moment would be expectation of x square, right, which will be say, summation i varying from 1 to n x i square p x i, right. And um, uh, then a very important quantity that we associate with uh, random variable. One is of course, E x and the second one is variance x, which is the expected, that means it is now the expectation of x minus E x and then whole square. 
So, you say that this is the moment second order moment of x about its expected value. See, these are all uh, for example, this is the uh, moment E x is the first order moment about the origin and this is about 0. This is also the second order moment about 0, but now here this is the second order moment about its uh, expected value. Now, if I open up this uh, bracket, then I get this. Right. And now, when I take E inside, because as we have seen by its definition, expected value uh, is distributive, I can take it inside the brackets. So, this will be E x square right, minus, since E x is a finite quantity already. So, uh, there will be E of x here. So, 2 comes out constant. Yeah, in fact, I am assuming that what I am saying is that, if you take C is some constant, then this will be C times expected x which immediately follows from the definition, because as we are um, defining this as uh, summation x i p x i. So, if, uh, if I consider the random variable c x, instead of then c x will take the values c x i. right? And so, in here when I am wanting to compute this, this will uh, have c is present here, but since c is a constant it will come out. And so, this will be simply c x. Okay. So, therefore, um, when I take E inside, uh, this will be twice E x into E x, then this is again a constant. So, therefore, uh, this will simply be E x square, there will be no expectation. Again, I am using the property that if uh, um, a random variable is taking a constant value, then uh, I mean I, this, is, this is not a random value, essentially this is a constant. right? So, if um, uh, x is c for all possible values, then uh, there will be uh, the expectation will simply be c, because uh, this is probability 1. So, the constant whenever a uh, random variable is just equal to a constant, uh, its expectation would be just that constant value. right? So, this is this and therefore, a minus 2 x square plus e x square. So, that reduces and therefore, this becomes e x square minus. So, therefore, you can also say that the variance of a random variable x is uh, variable of a random variable x is uh, uh, second order moment about the origin. So, expected x square minus the its expectation whole square. So, this is what we and therefore, we will go on computing this as we introduce uh, all special random variables and so on. Uh, so, the first one or the simplest random variable that we talk about is a Bernoulli random variable. This was um, this is named after the Swiss mathematician James Bernoulli and I think 1700 something probably he defined this random variable and you will see that uh, it is a very basic uh, random variable and it uh, we use this to build upon uh, other special kinds of random variables. So, um, this describes the situation or this random variable describes the situation in which the outcome is either uh, uh, a success or a failure. So, very simple you uh, perform an experiment and the outcome would either be a success or a failure. So, for example, if you toss a coin, you can say that uh, coming of a head is um, a success and coming up of a tail is a, a failure. Um, and so, uh, the values that x will take, we just uh, see we associate x equal to 1 with the success and x equal to 0 with a failure. Okay. And then let us say that probability p x equal to 1 is p, and so where of course uh, p is a number which belongs to 0, 1. And I am taking the open interval on both sides, that means p is not 0. So, I am defining a meaningful random variable or a meaningful experiment in which uh, the outcome is either a success or a failure, and so the probability x equal to 1 will be p, and probability x equal to 0 will be 1 minus p. So, now if you compute the expectation or the first moment of this random variable, then this will be simply 1 into p, because the random variable is taking the values 1 or 0. So, 1 into p plus 0 into 1 minus p, and therefore, this is equal to p, the probability of a success. And uh, the variance uh, by this formula, so when you compute the E x square, so here E x square, 1 square is 1. So, 1 square into p plus 0 square into 1 minus p, so which again is p. So, the, where, uh, the second order moment is also p, and so this is p minus 
the first order moment uh, first uh, or, uh, squared which is p square. So, p minus p square. So, this is the variance. So, very simple quantities which you can right away compute. And now, uh, we will um, further on use other special random variables, uh, discrete random variables and then of course, one will talk about uh, continuous random variables also. So, let me just illustrate uh, uh, interesting aspect of the expected value. Here, I am taking this example from Sheldon Ross. A class of 120 students are driven in three buses to a musical concert. Okay. Now, 36 are seated in the first bus, 40 in the second and 44 in the third. When the buses arrive, one of the 120 students is randomly chosen right, from the group of this who all got down from the bus, one student gets picked up. Let x denote the number of students on the bus of the randomly chosen student. See now, be carefully understand the event that I am telling you. X is the number of students on the bus of the randomly chosen student. So, we picked up one student randomly and then now we want to, uh, uh, the uh, because again that is a random process, I have chosen one of the students out of 120. Then X is the random variable, which denotes the number of uh, students on the bus on which this randomly chosen uh, student was sitting. Right. So, um, you have to find E x. So, find the expected value. So, first of all you see that um, uh, since student is chosen randomly, uh, any student is equally likely out of the group of 120, I choose any one of them. So, therefore, uh, the probability of the student being chosen from the first bus x equal to 36 is 36 by 120, then the probability x equal to 40 because there is a second bus. So, that will be 40 upon 120, because that many students are travelling in that uh, second bus. And finally, probability x equal to 44 will be 44 upon 120. So, now if I want to find out the expected value of this random variable, then the expected value will be uh, the random variable takes the value 36 into the probability of that bus being chosen. So, it was 36 upon 120. right? then uh, 40 into 40 upon 120 plus 44 into 44 upon 120. Now, when you add up these numbers, this comes out to be 1208 by 30, which is 40.2667. But if you just compute the, because uh, if you look at the event that um, you take any bus, uh, then the probability of being chosen is 1 by 3, because every bus is equally likely. So, if you want to compute the number of students on the uh, expected number of students on the bus of the uh, randomly, uh, okay, this is later on. Now, on the other hand, average number of students on a bus is 120 by 3. Yes, because I will add up, because each bus is equally likely to be chosen. So, that probability is 1 by 3. So, that into uh, 36 plus 40 plus 44, that will be 120. So, this is number is 40. Now, this number is less than 40.2667. And this is what I want to point out here is that you see the expected number of students on the bus of the randomly chosen student is more than the average number of students on a bus. So, just uh, think about it and why, why is this happening? Because you see uh, the, the bus in which the largest number of people or I should say uh, the more the number of uh, students on a bus the more possibility of that student being chosen as the uh, student, because you know the larger number of students are coming from that bus in which more students were traveling. So, the possibility of choosing that student is higher than choosing from other students. So, just think about this thing and so I thought I will end this lecture by uh, uh, giving you this interesting example. And so, we will as we go on we will see uh, various, various uh, implications, uses of uh, these measures, expected value, variance and so on, uh, we will introduce some more. Okay. Mm -hmm.